That is so crazy. What a day. Good morning, everybody from beautiful North Florida. We've got two more days left in the trip, so I'm hoping to get another full episode out of this. But I think we're gonna spend tomorrow in Georgia, so today might be our last day in Florida. So without wasting any more time, we're gonna get to it and see what we can turn up. Well, we're starting the day with another one of these guys. This guy's got some of that cool white pigment on the face that sometimes Gulf Coast box turtles have. Well, it causes it, but it certainly looks neat. And it's definitely time for you. This is a pretty old box turtle. You see how smooth the shell is. Time for him to get out of the road. So we'll just uh, hit him with one of these. Yeah, and there we have number two. That is a uh, pretty big one, actually. Very nice. A racer. It's the first one of those we've seen this trip, remarkably. We are in brown chin racer range, and you can actually see he's got a little bit of brownish color on his chin. What's up, dude? <laughs> I really can't believe we haven't seen a racer until now, but it's been a weird weekend for sure. All right, bud. I'm just going to gently help. Whoa! <laughs> Hey, bud. Come on. I'm just... Ah! Why? Brother, I just I just want to put you over here so you don't get hit by the next guy. Don't go back. Go the way you were heading. What are you doing? <laughs> yes, go that way. He thinks he's an indigo. Look at that. <laughs> yes, keep moving. God. Dude, no. Don't fight me. All right. We're just going to walk away from this battle and be the bigger person here. A mud turla. Look at that guy. He's got a pretty interesting looking face. I'm pretty sure this is just an eastern mud turtle. Um, definitely not a striped mud, but a little bit different looking than what we're used to seeing. A lot more yellow on the face. But nice to see something that isn't a box turtle as much as I love them. But that's been the only turtles we've seen on this trip so far. But uh, we'll just see if this guy wants to come out of his shell when I pick him up. No, he does not. It could be Shire, though. Look at that face. It's a good-looking dude. Another racer. I'm surprised these things aren't just disappearing the second I drive past them. He's the same size as the last one. Maybe a little bit skinnier. Alright, I don't think we need to catch this one because he's already making his way. He's going to zoom here in a second. Woo! That was kind of like a moderate zoom. He's just gone. That's crazy how fast they... Oh, there he goes. You see him kind of... Wow, he really zoomed. So, it's really hot at this point, so we've been stopping at Creeks. And we stopped at this one, and I just saw a giant snake take off into the water. Wasn't sure what it was, so I didn't grab it at first, but I was able to get down there and get a better look. It turns out, it's just a big unit of a brown water snake. Whoa, I mean, look at this thing. <laughs> That is ridiculous. It's got a meal in it, so we don't wanna make it regurgitate, but I did wanna show this thing to you guys because it is really cool how big it is. It's really not even that long. I mean, I've definitely seen longer brown waters, but it's so girthy, even without the meal. Like, just the size of its head, look at this. That is insane. Well, if we're only gonna find common snakes today, it might as well be outstanding examples of them. That is really cool. There she goes. All right, guys, well, since it's hot and there don't seem to be many snakes out, we have taken the time to stop and admire a scenic pitcher plant bog. Look at this. If you don't think that's cool, then I can't help you. I'm sure a lot of you have at least a moderate interest in botany and uh, maybe even watch some of the botany channels on YouTube. But uh, for those who aren't familiar, pitcher plants are a type of carnivorous plant that has a trap. So bugs and really anything, even tree frogs and stuff, will end up going down in there. There's the inside, but down inside the tube at the bottom are digestive acids. So the animals fall down into there and get trapped and are eaten, essentially. There's also tons of sundews here and at least a couple of different types of pitcher plants, but I'm not a plant guy, so I don't know exactly what I'm looking at here. I think this is Flava, the uh, yellow pitcher plant, but I'm not positive. 
All right, everyone, it's the heat of the day right now, so we're gonna just chill on the beach for a little bit, and we're gonna get back to it once it starts to cool off in the afternoon, so. It looks like we're finally gonna get a dry night of road cruising. I don't wanna jinx anything, because we could always have a pop-up shower ruin that, but as of now, it looks like the next couple hours are gonna be hot and sunny, and it should dry out some of this moisture that's just been lingering, and I think it's kind of what's putting a damper on the movement on the roadways. This might be the happiest I've ever been to see a cottonmouth. It has been a little bit of a struggle out here, but here we have what looks like a pretty beautiful Florida cottonmouth. I'm gonna take a quick photo and then we'll get a better look at him. Well, that is cool. That is a great looking snake. This is a Florida cottonmouth, so a full species different from the ones we have in North Georgia. We do get these guys in South Georgia. And uh, they do def definitely have a little bit of a look to them compared to the ones that are, I guess, just regular cottonmouths now. I think some people call them northern cottonmouths, but that's kind of ridiculous because hardly any of their range could be described as northern whatsoever. But I guess relative to these guys, they are northern, but it just doesn't sound right. That's not where you were going. Man, I mean, I guess that's where he really wants to go. <laughs> All right. Um, hopefully he doesn't try to cross the road again later because there's no way we're getting him out of that stuff. I was starting to wonder if we were going to go an entire North Florida trip without seeing a pygmy. But there he is. <laughs> Look at that little guy. Very nice. This is definitely a jumpy boy. He is uh, nice and warm and locked and loaded, so we're going to make sure he gets off the road safely and not push our luck with him because he is definitely grumpy. Look at that twitch. Good looking snake as always, though. I think this is our this is definitely our first dusky pygmy of the year too, I believe. Very cool. This lighting is terrible for some reason. I don't know why it looks like this. Maybe because it's backlit, but he's off the road and safe. And he's doing a little bit of a a tail flick there. Look at that. Hardly has any rattle on him whatsoever. But uh we'll leave him right there and keep moving. I'm glad snakes are finally moving in what seems like decent numbers on the road, so we're gonna try to take advantage of that. That one's a little prettier or at least a little bit lighter, maybe more contrasty. Fantastic snakes as always. Some are definitely a little more colorful than others, but that's a pretty nice one. All right, little homie is off the road and safe. Let's keep moving. This one looks like it's the biggest one yet. Sure enough, very nice. Oh, he's scrunching. Pygmy number three. All right, this guy was going the other way, so let's, uh... oh, <laughs> brother, you were going the other way. Let's see if we'll ride the, look at that belly. Yeah. I don't get to see venomous snake bellies too often on the channel because uh, he doesn't want to stay on the hook, that's for sure. Broker. I'm trying to do this as gently as I can, and you're not making it easy. Good boy. <laughs> or girl, actually. This is probably a female. Here you go. She's just like, now she's gonna, you know, sit there and show us your belly? She is going to sit there and show us her belly. All right, it's about to get dark, so we're on pavement, but we have a little Florida cottonmouth here who is uh, quite disgruntled at our presence, apparently. But we'll just move him out of the road. Second one of the day. All right, little bro. I see that you are not happy about this, so I'm going to make you much unhappier and touch you with my snake hook. Cooperative boy into the ditch. Whoop. Go on. <laughs> keep moving. Keep moving. <laughs> go. I don't want to fight you. I just want to make sure I don't run over you when I go to leave. There. Hey, look. Our first snake after dark is not even a snake. It's a little eastern glass lizard. Very cool. He's super dark, too. Hopefully that is a good omen. Stuff will be out. But it's been a pretty good day already. And uh, hopefully there will be some snakes out tonight. Maybe even a couple more lizards, but very, very nice. Always love to see these guys, even though this is the most common species of glass lizard. 
No. <laughs> you were going the other way, brother. Look at how fast they are in the grass. It's crazy. You can see. There you go. Right side of the road. Hey, look, we got a little night pygmy. Very cool. Really pretty one, too. It's another night pygmy. Why are the ones we're finding at night so much lighter than the ones during the day? I would have loved to have photographed this guy, but I don't want to bust out the flash, so we'll get him out of the road. There's a banded water snake that just crawled off the road. I'd be kind of surprised if that's the only one of those we see tonight, but kind of neat looking. He's almost solid black. Another night pygmy. Is this that same one? I don't think so. I think, I think we're in a different area, but it looks very similar. Good looking snake. Pygmy's everywhere all of a sudden. Yo! That's pretty cool. Little northern scarlet snake. Uh, not nearly as nice as the ones we get in North Georgia, but definitely something I'm excited to see. It's a scarlet snake. Cool. Yeah. His, uh, his red... His colors are just a little bit more muted than the ones we find back up north, so... Not quite as pretty, but still a really cool find. Probably the coolest thing we've seen so far tonight. But we'll get him out of the road. <laughs> hey! There we go! That is a mud snake! Well, that is definitely the best find of the trip so far. Look at him. The mud snakes in this area aren't the most vibrant, but I mean a mud snake is a mud snake. And we haven't seen one in a while. So, so nice. Well, this is definitely one of the many cool things here that we are always hoping to see. So that is definitely going to make the trip for us if we don't see any other crazy things. But... A beautiful eastern mud snake crossing the road and uh, a fairly snaky night all around so far. Although these guys aren't quite as pretty as their western counterparts in my opinion, eastern mud snakes are one of the coolest snakes in the U.S. They're just so unique and so beautiful and pretty variable too. I mean, no two really look alike. They generally have the same pattern trend where you have the, uh, the black on top and the red on the belly, which I'm going to show you guys in a second, but there is quite a bit of variability. These are very highly aquatic snakes, so when you find them on the land, they're kind of awkward. And you will occasionally find an individual like this guy that's very okay with sitting on its back, showing you its belly. They'll sit on their back with their head right side up and just show that beautiful, colorful belly. And then they'll flip back over and try to crawl away. But such a fantastic snake. I think that uh, all that rain that's kind of been putting a damper on the herping the last couple of days definitely paid off in the form of this guy tonight on the road. What a fantastic animal. If you're unfamiliar with mud snakes, they are actually one of the larger snakes we have here in the U.S. They're capable of getting gigantic. This is a pretty typical size to see, maybe a little bit on the small side. Maybe three feet long, four feet long is about what's average. But they can get really just absurdly large. And all of the things that make them awesome are made even cooler by the fact that they eat almost exclusively sirens and amphiumas, the large aquatic salamanders that we have here in the southeast and midwest U.S. I've long suspected that it's kind of uh, not really possible for that to be the only thing they eat because there are plenty of places, especially in Georgia, where we have mud snakes and no sirens and amphiumas. So that's really one of the more fascinating herp mysteries to me is what these guys are eating in areas where there are no sirens or amphiumas. And that's something I hope to one day figure out, but here in the coastal plain, that's probably a large portion of their diet because they are in every ditch and body of water that mud snakes occur in. But yeah, fantastic snake. We're not going to spend too much time with this guy, although I could sit here and look at him all night because he's beautiful, because there are just so many snakes moving. <coughs> Ugh, I ate a bug. God, that thing flew right down my throat. Ugh. Ugh. That sucked. But anyways, we're going to let this guy go and keep cruising. Hopefully there will be some more snakes out. It has been an incredibly snaky afternoon so far, and I'm very thankful for that, considering how slow... Road cruising has been up until this point in the trip. Here's a look at this guy in my hand for a size reference. 
Um, definitely not fully grown, but probably a reproductive adult male. But fantastic looking snake. We'll let him go on the other side of the road and keep cruising. Look at how quick he disappears in there. That's nuts. Awesome. All right, there's a car coming, but here we have a little peninsula ribbon snake. First one of these of the trip. Big ribbon. That is a huge ribbon snake. Look at that. I mean, I guess he's not gigantic, but he's a lot bigger than that last one. Snakes are still moving and it's a little after 10 o'clock at this point. Very cool. Holy cow. Look at this thing. I thought this was a king snake. This is the most ridiculous scarlet snake I've ever seen. Holy cow. So I, I knew Florida scarlet snakes could get pretty big, like the subspecies Florida scarlet snake, Samophora cassinia cassinia. But this is a northern scarlet here in North Florida, and it's just, it's ridiculous. It's, it's the coolest thing we found this trip by far. It's so absurd how big this snake is, and it's really cool looking too. Look at this. That thing is like two and a half feet long. That is absurd. This is just, it's absurd how big this snake is. And it's so weird looking, look at that. His color is almost brown, greenish brown. It really makes me wonder how old this snake is and what it's eating to get to this size because these guys are supposed to be obligate egg eaters. So they're not, not supposed to, oh, there's a little tiger beetle right there. But they're not supposed to eat anything but reptile eggs. And this thing has somehow attained a ridiculous size for its species, eating nothing but eggs. Really, truly impressive. What an incredible little snake. Not a very little snake, but I mean, compared to other species, it's little, but among his species, he is an absolute titan. But it is very late and we want to be able to get up tomorrow to road cruise, so we are going to let the snake go and uh, keep on cruising our way back to the hotel. Maybe we'll see something else, we'll see titanic northern scarlet snake as potentially our last snake of the night. That is so crazy. What a day. What is going on? It's midnight and there's a coral snake on the road. What is this? I am in disbelief right now. This is insanity. So, uh, coral snakes are pretty diurnal snakes, at least eastern coral snakes are. And you can definitely find them at night, and I, I found quite a few at night in South Florida, but I think this is, my, this is my first coral snake from North Florida, and it's my first one at night in outside of, it's my first one at night outside of South Florida. That is really, really cool. I cannot believe that just happened. It's midnight. We had a little stretch where we didn't see anything and we were gonna head to the hotel and give it up. And then we found that scarlet snake. And now this, holy cow. I cannot believe that. So I kind of, this is a slightly skinny coral snake, but I do believe it's a postpartum female. It's definitely a girl. And uh, this is the time of year where I would assume she has laid her eggs and is looking for food to uh, regain that weight that she lost from producing eggs. I've never really had a fantastic night of uh, night cruising in this region, I don't think, before tonight. So this is really fantastic. I've always done pretty well here during the day and, uh, you know, kind of at dusk, but like midnight and there's a coral snake in the road. That is insane. So, so cool. And coral snakes are cool in any context, but I mean, this is just ridiculous. We don't wanna cause this snake any more stress than we have already taking a couple photos. She's been really cooperative actually. She didn't really do any horrible twitching or anything. And she, uh, she just kind of chilled once we got her off of the road and onto this grass where she feels a little bit more at home, gets a little more traction. 
these things do not move well on pavement and i think it kind of scares them when they get out there and they're out in the open and they're just like ah i can't get traction and i'm out in the open i'm in danger but she's got food to find and we have sleep to get so we're going to keep on cruising our way to the hotel maybe we'll find something else at this rate nothing would surprise me that is one of the last things i would have expected to see crossing the road at midnight Go on, into the forest. <laughs> that is so awesome. It's really weird to see one at night. They look so cool in the light. Look at that. That is amazing. Well, that is uh, not exactly what I was hoping the weather would be like this morning. It has been thunderstorming for the last couple of hours. And uh, needless to say, we have not been road cruising like I was planning, so. Uh, definitely a weird end to the trip, but we're probably going to head home from here because where it's not thunderstorming, it's already hot. It's just going to be raining here for the rest of the day, I guess. So, kind of an L on today, but definitely a big W last night. What a fantastic couple of hours of road cruising we had.